Hello, biology students. This is Mr. Gales. Uh, today I'll be talking to you about the cell cycle and mitosis. This is screencast session number three for unit five in biology 300. That's the unit called cell cycle. Uh, this screencast is going to focus on the events that occur during mitosis and then cytokinesis. Uh, as we look at the learning targets for this particular screencast, you should be able to identify the major events of prophase. Uh, as part of that, you should be able to define centrioles, spindle fibers, and centromeres. Those are important terms that become you, or, or will be used in this screencast. You should be able to identify the major events of metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Those are some of the other phases of mitosis. You should also be able to distinguish between cytokinesis in plant cells and in animal cells. Now, the textbook reference for this screencast is Chapter 6, Section 3. And the packet reference for those of you that have Mr. Parker or Miss Wolf or myself is page 61 in your cell cycle packet. Now if you think about where we left off, we left off with uh, learning about the major events of the cell cycle, particularly of interphase. We looked at the events of G1, S, and G2. We know that the cell goes through its normal period of growth. Uh, it increases in size. It duplicates its DNA during the S phase. And during G2, it's preparing for division by uh, replicating organelles, preparing microtubules, just sort of overall getting ready for division. As we look at the events of mitosis, it's important to understand that mitosis is the division of the nucleus. And mitosis can be divided into four parts or four phases. That would be prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So we're going to begin by looking at a video clip here that describes what happens during prophase. This video clip's a little bit longer because the events of prophase take the longest. There are many things that are going on. So watch for what occurs in prophase, and after that, we'll look at a cell in prophase and sort of identify what's happening. Now let us follow the events inside of a cell as it starts to undergo the intricate process of mitosis. The earliest sign that a cell is leaving interphase and is entering the first stage of mitosis, called prophase, is that the chromatin begins to form itself into the definite shapes of separate chromosomes. And at the same time, the nuclear membrane that separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm begins to be absorbed into the cell. As these things happen, the tiny nucleolus found in the nucleus also disappears. Thus, prophase can be defined as the stage of mitosis when the chromosomes first appear, and the nuclear membrane and nucleolus disappear from view. As prophase progresses, the chromosomes become more distinct, and now that the chromosomes can be seen, a rather odd fact becomes apparent. That chromosomes are always found in groups of two, called homologous chromosomes. This means there are two copies of each chromosome present in every cell of the body with the exception of certain sex cells. In our example, there's one pair of tall chromosomes and one pair of short chromosomes. This state, where double chromosomes are present, is called the diploid condition of a cell. The diploid condition of a cell means that there will be two complete sets of DNA instructions present inside its nucleus. So that if something is wrong with one set of instructions, the other set will still be able to provide the cell with the information it needs to function properly. Under close examination, we find that in early prophase, each individual chromosome, whether tall or short, has a rather thickish appearance. This is because the DNA of each chromosome has replicated itself during interphase. On looking even more closely, we see that each chromosome actually consists of two parts called sister chromatids that contain the duplicated DNA. And at first, the sister chromatids are stuck very close together all along their lengths. It can now be seen that during prophase and part of interphase, there are actually four complete sets of DNA instructions present because the DNA of each homologous pair is doubled at this point. The sister chromatids are held together in a specific region called the centromere. Joined together in this way, the chromosomes begin to arrange themselves so they can separate into the newly forming cells. And as they do so, the sister chromatids become much more obvious. Besides the changes in chromatin and chromosomes, other important events are also occurring inside the cell when prophase begins. In animal cells, a structure called a centriole 
or centrosome, divides into two daughter centrioles that migrate to opposite ends of the cell. Between the centrioles, a delicate arrangement of microtubules called the spindle is formed. The microtubules that make up the spindle are called spindle fibers. Spindle fibers are critical to cell reproduction because they help arrange the chromosomes and later in mitosis, separate them into two equal groups. In normal cells, all the complicated events that define copays take between 30 and 60 minutes to complete. Finally ending when the next stage of mitosis called metaphase is reached. All right, so that video clip demonstrated what occurs during prophase. And when we look at pictures of cells in prophase, what we are generally seeing is the um, formation of chromosomes. You see here individual chromosomes. And there it's hard for you to tell how many there are or the organization of them, but you can actually see them in this case instead of the indistinct chromosome that's visible during interphase. The other thing that you'll notice is that the nucleus is far less distinct here, and that's because the nuclear envelope has, has dissolved in preparation for the division of the nucleus. All right, now let's jump to page 61, uh, which is the diagram of the process or the stages of mitosis that you have in your cell packet. And I'm going to bring this up. I've annotated this one already just to make it easy for us to go through this, and I'll try to zoom it in here so we can see what is happening. Uh, in prophase, what you've got here, the, the major events, the chromosomes become visible and the nuclear envelope dissolves. Now remember the chromosomes have to form from that material called chromatin. They sort of wind up and uh, that allows them to become packaged so that it's easy for them to be sent into the new cells. The nuclear envelope dissolves obviously because we have to have a clear passage for those the new chromosomes to spread to each end of the cell and the spindle forms. Now the spindle what we're really talking about here are the centrioles, which exist as a, a pair of centrioles called a centrosome, they exist near the nucleus, and as prophase begins, the centrioles begin to separate and move towards the poles of the cell, or move, move towards the opposite ends. And when they do that, they begin to produce what are called spindle fibers, and those spindle fibers are what eventually are going to grab onto the chromosomes. Now, one other thing I would note here during um, prophase, the chromosomes are referred to as double-stranded chromosomes because uh, each of the homologous chromosomes has been duplicated during the S phase, which occurs uh, in interphase. All right, so the next phase that we'll take a look at is metaphase. Metaphase is a very quick phase, uh, very short in terms of its duration, and also very easy in terms of what happens. So let's look at the video for metaphase. Metaphase, the second stage of mitosis, is defined as the stage of mitosis when all the chromosomes are lined up along the center or equator of the cell. Throughout this short 5 to 10 minute stage, the chromosomes are attached to the spindle fibers, and the centromeres that bind the sister chromatids together split apart. All right, that's it for metaphase. Really, what the most important part for metaphase is understanding that the chromosomes are lined up in the middle of the cell. It's easy to remember, metaphase starts with an M, Sorry about that. Metaphase starts with an M, and the chromosomes are in the middle M, middle of the cell. The middle of the cell is referred to as the equator of the cell, or sometimes the metaphase plate. So I'm going to jump out of this again and take a look at the diagram that we have on page 61. One more time. This is for metaphase. Chromosomes line up along the equator, which is along the middle of the cell. And on your drawing here, I've got the centrioles on either end of the cell. You can see the spindle fibers, which are going to attach to the chromosomes and the individual chromosomes here that are lined up. Now these are individual chromosomes that are double-stranded because they've already gone through DNA replication but they have not yet been pulled apart. So these would be referred to as here the, the, the two arms, and it's a little bit difficult to see, but the two arms of the chromosome are called sister chromatids and they would be joined together at the centromere. And we'll take a look at a picture now uh, that helps you to understand how that attachment works when the chromosomes are attached to the spindle fibers. Here you can see a double-stranded chromosome. This is a, a single chromatid here, and this is its duplicate called a sister chromatid. They're attached at a region called the centromere here, and the spindle fibers attach to a, a part of the chromatid which is called the kinetochore. And this is essentially where the, the 
uh, microtubules that form the spindle will attach and then will pull apart the chromatids. Here on this next picture, you can see that again. Uh, notice that the, the chromosome is composed of this chromatin that's been wrapped up into a distinct structure. You have the centromo centromere here, which is where the two sister chromatids have been joined together. And then you have the kinetic ore, which is where the microtubules of the spindle attach. And you can see a, a few more pictures here that describe that. Here again, uh, this is showing the chromosomes al along the, the metaphase plate or the equator. Okay. Now the next phase that we'll look at is anaphase, and this also is a very brief phase. The splitting of the centromeres signals the start of the third stage of mitosis called anaphase. Anaphase is defined as the stage of mitosis when the sister chromatids separate and move toward opposite poles of the cell. And when this happens, they are no longer called sister chromatids. They are now called daughter chromosomes. This movement happens fairly rapidly, in about five minutes, with the result that the spindle fibers disappear from view, and a full diploid set of chromosomes is now found at each end of the cell. All right, anaphase. When we look at cells in anaphase, we see the chromosomes uh, now single-stranded chromosomes being pulled apart and moved towards the poles of the cell. Um, we're going to jump out of this one more time and go back and look at our diagram, which demonstrates what's happening in anaphase. Anaphase, uh, first thing that would happen is the centromeres that hold the chromatids together are divided. The chromatids, which are now called single chromosomes, we heard them being described as daughter chromosomes, move towards the opposite poles. What actually occurs is the spindle fibers are shortening during that period of time. So here we see the centriole spindle fibers that are attached to a single chromosome, and they're moving towards the poles of the cell. Down at the bottom here, we, I've written single-stranded because now in anaphase, the chromosomes have become single-stranded. All right, our final phase of mitosis is called telophase, and telophase is, uh, in essence, the reverse of what happened during prophase. Uh, let's take a look at the events here. The fourth and final stage of mitosis is called telophase. Telophase is defined as the stage of mitosis when the new daughter chromosomes change back into the threads of chromatin and new nuclear membranes begin to form. Also during telophase, new nucleoli appear in each newly forming nucleus. As the final stage of mitosis concludes, the cytoplasm divides in half as cell membranes close up around the two new daughter cells. This final process of cell reproduction is called cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is defined simply as the division of the cytoplasm during mitosis. Between 10 and 15 minutes are required to finish both telophase and cytokinesis. When the entire cell reproductive process is completed, the two new cells are returned to the interphase state and each possesses the identical genes of the parent cell. These two new half-size cells will then go on to grow larger until each achieves the full size of the original parent cell. Okay, that's telophase. Obviously, what's going on here is reversing what occurred in prophase. Uh, a cell in telophase may look like this. This is actually late telophase. The chromosomes have all unwound back into chromatin, and you can actually see the cytokinesis occurring here. In an animal cell, what forms is something called a cleavage furrow that we'll talk about in just a moment. I'm going to jump back into the diagram here and look at what happens during telophase. Just to sort of reiterate, the nuclear envelope forms again at each pole to surround the new chromosomes. The chromosomes uncoil back into chromatin. The spindle and uh, the spindle apparatus will dissolve back into the cell. And then cytokinesis begins to occur. And you can see cytokinesis occurs here. In an animal cell like we're seeing here, what occurs in cytokinesis is there are a series of protein threads that wrap around the cell and begin to slowly pinch that cell into two uh, individual new cells. Of course, in uh, telophase, the end of the of mitotic division, uh, all the chromosomes are single-stranded now. They've been separated from the chromatins that made them uh, double-stranded earlier. All right, now just as a quick run-through on, on the whole cell cycle before we get into cytokinesis, what you look at when you're seeing this diagram, I sort of put the cell cycle into its proper order. We have G1S and G2, which together make up interphase. And then we have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, which make up 
mitosis. And then in just a moment, we're going to look at cytokinesis very briefly. Mitosis and cytokinesis together are the division phases which make up cell division. And if you add in everything together, interphase and cell division, or interphase mitosis and cytokinesis, you get the cell cycle. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint and finish up by looking at what occurs during cytokinesis. Cytokinesis, again, in animal cells is... Uh, characterized by the production of what's called a cleavage furrow. And you can see the cleavage furrow right in here. This is where the protein threads begin to wrap around the cell. Uh, and as they wrap, they constrict the cell and eventually separate it into two individual cells. Now, those cells are going to be smaller than your average cell, but they go back then into G1, and they go through a period of growth where they increase to the normal size. In plant cells, there is a slightly different process because we have to account for the production of the cell wall. In plant cells, there are some membrane-bound vesicles carrying the materials that make the cell wall, namely cellulose. And those uh, vesicles line up along the, the midline of the cell here. And as those vesicles burst, they form what is called a cell plate. So cytokinesis is characterized by the formation of a cell plate between the two cells. And then eventually that cell plate matures into a new cell wall, and the cells then can grow from there. So that's mitosis and cytokinesis. It's the final part of the cell cycle. What we'll be doing in class over the next couple of days are some supportive activities that will make sure that you can identify each of those phases, both visually and also by descriptions. Again, if you've got any questions, make sure that you bring them into class with you, and we'll see you again in biology.